Hello guys, today I'm going to do another Geometry Dash tutorial, and it's how to use the triggers. Because there are actually a lot of people who still don't know how to do that, and I would like to do a beginner tutorial. So first when we load up the editor, it will look like this, or something like this, since I'm using a texture pack. Then you need to go to the build section right here, go all the way over, and click on the this one with the three dots and then that's where you'll find all the triggers move trigger pulse alpha toggle spawn For right now I'll be starting with the move trigger so select on the move trigger you see like I did and place it wherever you want the effect to be well nothing happens right now well now, go back into the blocks tab and place whatever blocks you want. I'm just going to place a bunch of these. I forgot. I ignore damages on. Still, nothing happens. Now, select all of your blocks. Like that. Click the edit group. Next free. And add. Remember the number you get. I got one. Then click OK and deselect it. Then select on your move trigger, go to edit object. Over here in target group ID, you want to um, enter the number that you found in the edit group tab on your block. Mine was one. And then, let's play again. Nothing still happens. Still nothing happens. So now, Select on your move trigger again, click edit object. Nothing happened because you didn't make it move X or Y. If you don't know, um, X axis is left and right, and Y is up and down. So let's say I wanted this to move three blocks up. You wouldn't say three since ten blocks, uh, no, ten is one block. So you would have to say thirty. This is the amount of time you want it to move in, so I want to move it in half a second. Now let's see what happens. Now it moves like that. You see? Another way you could use this is you place another move trigger. Remember, if you want to have more than one block, you have to add all of the blocks that you want to move in different directions into different groups. So let's say I had these. I would select all of them, edit group, next, next free again, and now I have two. And then click OK. Now I'm also going to show you how to make a key with the move trigger. And this time, enter the same thing and the amount you want it to move up. I'll make it move up three again. But this time, do touch triggered. That means when you touch it, um, something will happen. And then go into the orb tab and get a key and place it on top of the move trigger. And now this is what will happen. Only when you touch the key it will move up. When you don't, you die. Now I will go on to the pulse trigger. So go into the, t um, the tab with the three dots and get the pulse trigger out. Get whichever block you want to pulse. It can be any block. Like, you can pulse a speed portal. Have whatever block you want to pulse a color. Yeah, uh, the pulse block makes everything change color. And click next free and add. Remember the number again. Go to Pulse. It's automatically set to Channel, but you want it to be Group. So set it to Group, and enter whatever whatever number you want it to be, whichever number it was. Mine was three. Then you have a color wheel, or you can do the HSV. I like the color wheel. You make it. This is where you choose whichever color you want it to pulse. Let's say I wanted mine to be blue. And now. In order to make it pulse, you have to set the fade in, hold, and fade out. 
Fade in is how long it takes to turn that color. So I'll make it 0.5 actually. And then I'll make it hold forever. Because 9999 is the maximum amount. And now let's play. You see it turns blue. You can also do it with different colors. Pink. What did I just do? And yeah, you can also make it green. You can make it all sorts of different colors. And you can actually do this with any number of objects. So let's say I also wanted these to be green. I would select them all and make them all in group 3 or whatever group you're doing. For whichever group the pulse trigger is pulsing. And now they all turn green. But now, we have the alpha trigger. What the alpha trigger does is it changes the opacity of the object. You don't know what the opacity is. If it's at 1, it means the object is fully visible. If that's at 0, the object is completely invisible. So, let's say I wanted these blocks to disappear. I would select them all at a group, next free, and add that group. On the alpha trigger, I put in that group. Fade time is however long you want to fade in. It's the fade in. I want them to be invisible. And now, they turn invisible. It's cool. I can even make invisible invisible orbs and then and there's an orb there now next we have the toggle trigger the toggle trigger is basically used to turn off objects and let's say I have a wall of spikes Okay, I have a wall of spikes. Select them all. Edit group, next free. Add. And I put the toggle trigger to toggle group 5. And now, when I come across it, it turns the ob objects off and I don't die. Now we have the final trigger. The spawn trigger. It's automatically set to on touch because you can use this with keys or whatever you want actually. It's for if you want to make two things happen at once. Right now, let's say we wanted the wall to move up and this around the key to disappear. We would set the wall into group 6 or whatever group and the ring around the key into a different group. Then we put the spawn trigger in the... no, no we don't put the spawn trigger in the middle yet. Now we have to place all the triggers that we need to do that. Place a move trigger and set it to whatever group this is. The wall is minus 6 make it move however you want and then click spawn trigger click edit group and make this in group 8 and now make a pulse trigger set this one to group 7 because that or whatever group the ring is let's say I want it to pulse red why not? And then I have to set the spawn trigger checkbox. Also put this in group 8. Nothing will happen yet though. 
because you have to program the spawn trigger. On the spawn trigger, you click edit, edit object, and you make it whatever group all of the triggers that you want to go at the same time are. Those are in group 8. So you pick group 8, and now you put it in the middle of the key. And this is what happens now. With the spawn trigger. You see how now, then it turns pink because it's mixing and the wall moves up at the same time. I don't really understand why you would ever want to use the spawn trigger because you could just stack the two triggers on top of each other. Whoops. And yes, thank you for watching. I, I still owe you guys three more <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> So see you next time.